Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to teach you about the brain, its ventricles and the cerebrospinal fluid. Let's first start with ventricles. Now ventricles aren't those typical atrium and ventricles that you might think about. But these ventricles in the brain are basically cavities. And these cavities are lined by cells known as ependymal cells. And this whole lining is also known as choroid plexus. So the function of these ependymal cells is to secrete and distribute cerebrospinal fluid. So the ventricles are basically cavities. They're lined by ependymal cells or also known as choroid plexus and they produce the CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. Now cerebrospinal fluid is very important for the functions of the brain and it grossly performs three functions. The first one is buoyancy. So cerebrospinal fluid is uh, surrounds the brain and the spinal cord all around. So in the subarachnoid space, that is the space between arachnoid layer and the pia matter, there is cerebrospinal fluid. And what this fluid does is, suppose the net weight of the brain is X grams. So because of the buoyancy force given by this cerebrospinal fluid, the net weight of the brain becomes X minus whatever weight is reduced by the fluid. So that way, the amount of pressure the brain exerts on the body becomes way more lesser. So this is buoyancy. Now the second function that it gives is protection. So whenever there is some kind of uh, disturbance towards the brain or on the head, it does not directly impact the brain because of the cushioning kind of effect provided by this layer of cerebrospinal fluid. And the last and final function is uh, transportation of electrolytes. So as you know, for uh, an electrical signal to be transported in our nervous system, you need electrolytes such as sodium and potassium. So exchange of electrolytes and all those functions are also carried out by cerebrospinal fluid. So it's present mostly in the ventricles, in the spinal cord and around the brain. Let me give you a few facts and figures about it too. The amount of cerebral sp uh, cerebrospinal fluid that is present at a time in our brain is 150 ml and the amount of fluid secreted by the ependymal cells in the ventricles is 500 ml per day. Now let's come to ventricles. So as I told you, they are cavities. Now let's see their distribution. There are four ventricles. The first two of them are known as lateral ventricles. And as you know, our brain, this is our brain and it's divided into two hemispheres. So if I look at it from this way, these are the two hemispheres. There are two lateral ventricles here, which I've given here. These two are the first and second ventricle, also known as the lateral ventricles. These two are then attached to the third ventricle here, which is present in the diencephalon. So most of the questions that surround ventricles are regarding the location of the third ventricle. So it's present in the diencephalon. And the third ventricle is directly attached to the first two ventricles by the small foramen, which is known as foramen of Monroe. Okay. And now this is the first two ventricles, that is the lateral ventricles, and this is the third ventricle. Now let's come down to the fourth ventricle. So as you know, along with the corpora quadrigemina, cerebral aqueduct is also a part of the midbrain. So through the cerebral aqueduct, that is this area, the third ventricle, this one, is attached to the fourth ventricle, which is this. This is the third one. So the third and fourth ventricle are attached by cerebral aqueduct. Okay, and the fourth ventricle has the small protrusion here, which gives its prominence as, an, uh, as its location. Now from the fourth ventricle, the cerebrospinal fluid can go many ways. First way is circulating among the ventricular system. The second way is slipping into the subarachnoid space, that is this area. And the third way 
is going into the spinal cord where cerebrospinal fluid is also present. So this is the entire structure of ventricles and how they are distributed. That was all for today's session. So we are done with ventricles and the cerebrospinal fluid and I think I can proceed further with probably the nerves involved and the eye and ear which is also a part of nervous system. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.